Just a few days ago, on the shores of the Sea of Galilee, a team of archaeologists uncovered something extraordinary. They uncovered a mosaic floor with inscriptions from a 1,500-year-old structure. A structure that is believed to be the lost Church of the Apostles. We've been here before. In fact, two other times to reveal this magnificent ancient city, which is believed to be the city of Bethsaida, where, according to the New Testament, two of Jesus' apostles were from. Okay. Yeah. So, here it is. But what draws us here for the third time is not only the magnificent mosaic, but also a great mystery that lies in these ancient walls. So wait, so you've excavated most of the walls, the outside walls yeah. of the church, and there's still no door? Not yet. How's that possible? How could a church, especially this size and importance, have no doors? It's weird. I mean, it's a huge church. Really weird. No door. We don't know yet how they got in. So join us on this adventure as we head back to the archaeological site of El Araj to examine with our own eyes the mystery of the Church of the Apostles. This site is located at the northern shore of the Galilee Sea. This is the area where it is believed Jesus fed the 5,000 people and healed the blind man. Every time we come here, it's like we are taken back to 2,000 years ago. Because the area is still undeveloped, you don't see those big buildings or skyscrapers that you have to dig from underneath them to find things. And that is why the archaeologists were able to dig out a whole city just a few feet under the ground. It's been three years since we first visited this place. And today, we're excited to return for another year to see what the team has uncovered. Despite being shut down for a whole year due to the pandemic, this year the team was able to resume their work and make significant progress. Dr. Notley, how are you? Wow. So good to see you. Good to see you. Hi, Rhoda. <laughs> Behind the camera. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is incredible. It, it continues. I, I can't, I, I, this is, this yeah. is beautiful. The team has excavated almost the entire complex a complex they believe to be the lost church of the apostles. A church that is mentioned in the ancient writings, but was never found until now. We're running out of, running out of time. We've been sort of challenged by COVID. Mm. We've canc had to cancel our volunteers. But the plan is from here out to do every September, October, to do a, a profession, what they call a professional dig with um, local labor. Despite the global challenges, this archaeological season, the team has made a significant discovery. Yeah, so, so, what, so it's in Greek? Yes. The inscriptions are in Greek. And in they date to 5th century? or it fix. Wow. Mm. Yeah. Let's get it to... Wow. That's incredible. So... Is, is this a Greek letter or is this a cross? Yes, a cross. cross. You have a, I mean, to fill in... They put in a cross here, yeah. and a cross, cross here. Yeah. Wow. Just a few days earlier, when the team was excavating the floor level of the church, they have stumbled upon a monumental discovery. Yes. 
they have found a giant mosaic medallion with Greek inscription dating to the Byzantine period. In the days, um, in the days of our ruler, our holy father, and, and our bishop, and then we don't have the names, unfortunately. And then it talks about the um, renovation. And so apparently it is a benefactor, a person responsible for the renovation of the church, which actually matches the archaeology, because what we're finding is that it's, in many places, there's the, the walls are cutting into the mosaic, which means they're coming after the mosaic floor. So there's a, the various stages in the Byzantine period where it's undergoing renovation and changes. This is an incredible discovery, which paints a better picture of the timeline of this city. So let's break down what they're finding here. In the previous seasons, they found Roman era ruins. Lots of them, pottery, coins, even a Roman bathhouse. Now, take that together with the historical records, and we can come to a pretty nifty conclusion that this would be the best candidate for Bethsaida Julius, the town where apostles Andrew and Peter are from. That means Jesus could have walked these very grounds. Now, this season, they have uncovered a church. A church they believe dates back to the Byzantine period. But here's the catch. They have discovered this mosaic with an inscription that says that this church was renovated. That means it went farther structural changes, which the archaeological team now needs to kind of decipher and make sense out of which wall dates to the original church and which wall dates to the renovated church. But to make things even more complicated for the team, there comes another group of people, centuries later, possibly the Crusaders, and they convert the church to a sugar factory. And to do that, they construct multiple walls inside the church, on top of the mosaics. Luckily, in some places, they add a buffer above the mosaics made out of dirt, and the team still has hope to uncover the original floor. I think you get a better sense of the church eventually when we remove the bulks, these things, sort of artificial barriers, as well as the crusader walls. And then you'll get an idea of the very, this is a large church, very large church. How does that, how can it be explained? Why would they build walls inside of? This isn't were... a church, they're, they have a sugar factory. Remember, they're not, uh... the church isn't for them, it's not a place of worship. They're using, they're reusing uh, Byzantine walls. Uh, they're settled here and are primarily production of sugar. These so-called Crusader walls were built much later after the Byzantine, and they make it very hard to see the original structure. Something that the team is going to fix next year by carefully removing them and expose the true size and layout of this church. A process which may also reveal additional hidden mosaics. So, so hopefully a year from now, we, there will be no walls in the center and we can see a clear picture of how the church looks like. That's the idea. Uh, I'll just expose it for, for you to see. Unfortunately, not all of the mosaics can be recovered, as some of the crusader walls cut deep through the floor, leaving the mosaics damaged. So this is what left from the main inscription in front of the bema of the church. Uh, which is not much, but still <laughs> very exciting. Bema would be the altar, like the Old Testament lama or bema the, that they used. It's, it's like the, the elevated. It's the platform. It's okay. like when you're in Jewish tradition, you come up to the bema, you come up to the raised platform for the reading of the Torah. Okay. And that tradition gets carried over into the church where you have this platform in the front, it's where the sermons are done. It's a stage. It's the yeah, platform or stage in front of the church. So it's the same word that is used in the Hebrew Old Testament? Yes. Okay. <laughs> what a cool dig. And how awesome was it for us to see it unfold in the ways that it did. 
I mean, how often do you find a Byzantine basilica that is dedicated to the apostles? And the location? Right on the Sea of Galilee, right on its shores, not that far from the place where Jesus walked on the water. But this place still holds a few mysteries, one of them being particularly intriguing. Probably next week, Moti said this morning they're continuing into next week, they'll focus their attention here trying to find where the western wall and the northern wall meet, and also hopefully to answer the question, where, uh, the one thing that they're missing in this is that there are no doors. Oh. No doors? How could a church, especially this size and importance, have no doors? So wait, so... Sorry, no, go this ahead. Is, this is, so I need to grab my, grab my mind around this. So you've excavated most of the walls, the outside walls yes. of the church, and there's still no door. Not yet. How is that possible? Um, we're working on it. Is it possible that the door is simply hiding in a small section that they have yet to excavate? Or could there be another explanation? Uh, it kind of blows my mind that there's still no door found. It's weird. I mean, it's a huge it's church. Weird. No door. I mean, we haven't done this corner. Maybe here in the corner. But normally you'd have a door, like one, two, three door at this end. That's the normal way to do and it. And what would be the size of the doors? Large, usually, or? Uh, for a church this size, it would have to be, I think. Huh. So, it's very strange. <laughs> I'm going to guess that it's going to be here on the northwest. Okay. That they're going to come in from the northwest, somewhere where we're standing, that they'll come and... I could be wrong, we won't know until they excavate, but that, that would be my guess. Since the team has a few more days to excavate, we have decided to go home and wait until they finish the excavations, hoping that they will still discover the door. And now that a few weeks have passed, we have arranged a call with one of the archaeologists from the dig, Achia Cohen Tavor, who can give us an update on the matter. Hi, Achia. Thank you so much for, uh, for joining and uh, taking the call. Glad to be here, as usual. <laughs> so it's been about a month, and I know you guys stayed there to finish the excavations. And the big question I have for you is, have you found the door? So... No. Still uh, no doorway, no entrance whatsoever to the church. Um, I'm not excluding that there still is one hiding in the eastern section. If not, if there aren't any uh, entrances, <laughs> it is puzzling, it is puzzling. Despite their efforts, the team was not able to locate the entrance to the church. But Achia thinks that there is still a small chance to find it in the ground that is not yet excavated. And how much of the walls, um, of the outside walls of the church, do we still yet to excavate? Uh, I mean, in percentages, how much oh. are we speaking? Few, <laughs> like 10% maybe. The team has only 10% of the wall left to excavate. But considering the fact that the most probable places for the entrance have already been excavated, this leaves a little chance to find a door. And for this reason, the team is starting to speculate of alternative explanations. Moti is starting to speculate about maybe some kind of... Um, Musaleya church, like the church has been turned in a second stage, as we know there have been at least two stages in the church, into a memorial uh, building rather than a functioning church. Uh, that's a speculation, I mean, it's, it's very logical, if there are no entrances and there is a church. Could it be that at some point in history, this church was sealed, cemented under layers of dirt and walls, and then at later times, possibly used as a memorial? Wow, well, that's a real mystery. 
Yeah. That's what's so fun about excavating, that the mysteries are coming on. You you answer one question, and then another pops up. Wow. Well, thank you so much for answering these questions and help us understand a little better what happened after we left and also what to look forward to next season, next year. Um, we can't wait to see what you guys find there. I'm playing my fingers, coming back to then excavating. <laughs> well, we hope we'll be there uh, alongside and uh, document what you guys find. Thanks so much, Achia. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. You. Bye. So what now? Now we enter a season of waiting, data gathering, and anticipation. Anticipation for next year as the team returns to finish uncovering the remainder of the wall, open up more sections, and dig deeper to find the answers that we could not find today. It's a bit sad that archaeology season came to an end, because we're going to be thinking about this mystery uh, for a while now. Every time we come here, they like intrigue us more and more with their findings. It's so cool. It's so wonderful. And there's so many more things that the team has found this season that we didn't get a chance to look into yet. Things like a mysterious column that was used as some type of a table and it stands right outside the main church hall. And nobody can really explain what it's doing there. And then the colorful mosaic floors they found that possibly date earlier than the renovated church. So is it possible the team has gotten to the original level of the church? And then there's this hole that they excavated in the middle of the church that the team has yet to explain as well. And also there's this weird construction in the church, which was built later, that they still also don't know what it was used for. And all this is just a fraction of information and artifacts that they found here. So we will be itching and waiting to return here next year. What if they'll find that door? Or what if they will find the mosaic that will explain this mystery? Thanks so much for watching this video. But before you go, uh, we've got something for you. Uh, some of you asked us, how can we come to Israel and be involved in some of these archeological digs? Well, the truth is, it's actually not easy. You need to be licensed or you need to volunteer and that costs a lot of money. It's a special schedule and it's, uh, it's not just come and <laughs> visit and dig. However, there is one way that we know that you can do that through a company called Dagesh Archaeology, which is uh, led by archaeologist Achia Cohen Tavor, who was on this video today with us. And he has a company where he takes tourists, he goes to archaeological digs, and has them participate in excavating ancient towns, cities, and artifacts. So you don't just come to see, but you also touch. You participate and maybe even get to go into places where otherwise you wouldn't be able to. Absolutely. And that's pretty cool, it is. isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so go to the description of this video where you'll find a link to his website and also his email address. We hope that it will be a blessing to you. We hope you enjoyed this video and until next time, God bless you. And the best is yet to come. Amen. Bye-bye. Where's your faith? Quick announcement, we have opened a Telegram channel where we send periodic updates and also post exclusive content that we do not include on our YouTube channel. To join, simply open your browser and go to t.me slash snrisrael. We hope to see you there soon.